Welcome to Airgun TV. Now, Airgun Noir is the buzzword at the moment. Everyone's making black guns, well, guns with black stocks at least, and day state are no different. And here they are. They're the tactical versions of the Air Ranger and the Air Wolf. Now they might look the same, they've both got buddy bottles, both got black stocks coming with a silencer, but actually these two rifles are incredibly different because inside the Air Ranger there is a mechanically driven air system, but inside the Air Wolf it's completely computerised and it's all driven electronically. Both are state-of-the-art air guns. I suppose the question is, what's the difference when you shoot them? Let's find out. It's clear to me that both these rifles are serious hunting tools and being buddy bottle pneumatics they give huge shot counts per charge of air which is exactly what you want for field work. Filling up is the same for each. Pull the protective tusk cover off the quick fill charging port in the fore end, snap on your hose and transfer air into the gun from your air bottle or pump. These guns have an onboard gauge to help here, an electronic one on the Wolf's LCD information display and an analogue dial in the case of the Ranger. And Daystate put a useful insert on the breech of each rifle indicating the exact working pressure. Despite their very different actions, shot counts are fairly comparable thanks to the highly efficient Harper Patent Slingshot Hammer system of the Air Ranger and the mapped compensated technology inside the Airwolf. These figures relate to 12 foot pound UK models with 400cc bottles, although the guns are also capable of much higher muzzle energies with lesser shot counts. Of course, running a conventional mechanically driven action where the valves open by a hammer strike, the Air Ranger has the usual power curve. As you can see from this 100 shot trace, the gun hasn't yet reached its sweet spot and the velocities are still rising. But thanks to the Airwolf's advanced MCT action, the onboard computer controls the timing of the valve opening to deliver near identical velocities throughout the charge. Effectively, it's a digital air regulator, and as such, there's no power curve to speak of. Plus, of course, you get a few more shots per fill up. How this translates into shooting is that with the Air Ranger, you'll need to work out where the flattest part of the power curve is for maximum accuracy. Whereas you can be sure that whether you're on shot number one or shot number 300, the Airwolf will be shooting its pellets at identical velocities. And, as all shooters know, consistency is key when it comes to accuracy. So let's take a look at how the Ranger and Wolf stack up downrange. Because it was a bit blustery when we were filming, I zeroed up both 177 day states over an indoor 25 metre range but these targets show the groups obtained at 40 metres in the open with 7.9 grain day state LI roundheads. I'm aiming dead centre, hence the slight drop off from the bull. Both guns were shot freehand using a magazine loaded with pellets straight from the tin and it's clear to see that their recoilless actions are extremely conducive to printing tight groups at distance. I'd like to say I did my bit, but in truth, it's the rifles doing most of the work here. I don't think anyone could be disappointed with that and I have to say that although there's no real difference between the two guns I enjoyed shooting the Airwolf just that little bit more because the electronic action was just so much faster it felt the more forgiving but you can't take it away from the Air Ranger that is pretty good. Pretty good is perhaps an understatement for these guns. They're identical ambidextrous thumbhole stocks which give you the choice to shoot thumb up as well as thumb through give you the kind of control you need not just on the target range but also in a hunting environment where pulled shots are simply not an option. And it may look a heavy bulky gun but actually it feels very light and so well balanced in the shoulder it's incredible. While I'm not necessarily a fan of all black guns, the Ranger and Wolf are available with conventionally grained woodwork, and I must commend Daystate for their Italian-made stocks, the design of which certainly plays its part in the tactical's exemplary handling characteristics. And although the stock is devoid of any checkering on the forend or the grip, it's actually got a trick up its sleeve. That's because this isn't a synthetic stock, it's a wooden one with a special soft grip finish. It feels really tacky and very good in slippery conditions. And if you wear shooting gloves with non-stick palms, 
Well, it's like glue. Because of their chalk and cheese actions, each tactical model runs a different trigger. Though it has to be said that as far as the let off is concerned, neither unit really has an edge over the other one. Backed up by a rotary safety catch at the end of the breech, each is two stage and fully adjustable, though the Air Ranger's curved blade is thinner and uses mechanical sears to slip away the shot, while the Wolf's is electronic and lets go its shots with a gentle press. It's a bit like clicking your computer mouse. One other thing about the Wolf's electronic action. Being powered by its onboard rechargeable battery, it has a secondary safety device in that you need to turn it on with the supplied ignition key. And, as an Airwolf owner myself, here's something you must remember with this gun. Always carry your on-off key on your car keys, because I guarantee one day you will go to your permission, get your gun out, and you won't have your key with you to switch it on. No shooting. Now, with the Wolf being based around Day State's Advanced Mark IV action, its trigger is also used to program the various shooting modes. There's already a detailed programme on Airgun TV about this feature, I'll put a link at the end of this film, but to briefly recap, you get options to reset the magazine and overall shot counts in the information display panel, show the rifle's current air pressure, set its power output to one of two levels, adjust the readout's illumination, decide if you want the magazine's countdown reminder on or off, force the safety catch to be reset after each shot, and even get the gun to bleep you when its air charge drops below your chosen figure. Finally, there's a reset option, and all these user modes are easily set by simply pressing the trigger when the rifle's in its program mode. The Air Ranger also has its own shooting options. Like the Wolf, it's supplied with both a 10-shot rotary magazine that automatically indexes with each cycle of the breech bolt, and Daystate's single-shot tray, which drops into the breech, no tools required, where it's held secure by magnets. I couldn't detect any differences in downrange performance regardless of which loading system I deployed on either of the tacticals, and it's certainly very reassuring to know that you're not sacrificing any accuracy when you're hunting in multi-shot mode. Though fiddly at first, loading pellets into the magazine soon becomes second nature, once you've had a few practice runs. And as if this dual breech concept isn't clever enough, Daystate have also designed their magazine so that you can insert it from either the right or the left hand side of the breech to suit your own style. Simply move this stop pin from here to here. Now, you'll have no doubt noticed that lovely carbon fibre end can on the muzzle of these two tacticals. And as sexy as it looks, it's an optional extra, I'm afraid. Although it's anything but a mandatory accessory. That's because the actual barrel of this pair of Daystate Buddy Bottle PCPs is enclosed in a shroud. And this shroud doubles as a kind of reflex sound suppressor, directing air back down the void in order to dissipate it. But there's a half-inch UNF threaded muzzle insert, so if you do decide to splash out on the Daystate Airstream Mark V carbon fibre reflex silencer, and why not, then you'll have pretty much the quietest air rifle to take into the field. So, which to choose? The mechanically driven Air Ranger tactical, or the computerised, all electronic Air Wolf tactical? Well, in all honesty, they perform equally as well. But I think the reason I opted for an Air Wolf of my own was down to the phenomenal lock time of this technological masterpiece. It's still the most forgiving gun I've ever shot. And that's my kind of air rifle. Yeah. <laughs>